Welcome to the Otaku Podcast, everybody. My name is Braxton. And I'm Taylor Fry. This podcast is for otakus by otakus. In this episode of the Otaku Cast, A Beginner's Guide to Anime, Part 4. The last part, more than likely. So, last episode, we began talking about Slice of Life's. This episode, we're going to continue talking about Slice of Life's. This time, nothing special. Just the same thing as last episode. Just we had to split it up because there are too many Mm -hmm. Slice of Life's to talk about. That we just decided to split into two little segments. And uh, today's episode, I got four in a row. And then Braxton talks for basically, it's basically the same (laughs) amount as yesterday. Or not yesterday, his last uh, episode's. Because he is a majority slice of life guy, so mm. he's gonna he's taking the lead on both of these episodes because Pretty he's much. just much more knowledgeable about the topic. I'm more knowledgeable about slice of life. So you're more knowledgeable about action, fantasy, and that sort of stuff. So for the first one that I'm going to be talking about, uh, we be, we ended the last episode talking about um, a romance. I'm going to start this off once again with another romance. This one came out in I want to say it was spring 2019. Which is the same series, the same season as uh, Demon Slayer and a bunch of the other like n- morally known popular uh, anime of 2019. For whatever reason, 2019 was spring 2019 was probably the most popular season out of this year. Uh, that could be debated, of course. But this one is titled Kaguya Sama: Love Is War. This series, I've heard of this one. This series is really like in a whole. It's like a romance drama, but wholesome in a way. So. The story is, it's this girl named Kaguya Shimo, excuse me, it's this girl named Kaguya Shiomiya, and she is uh, on the student council, okay, and mm-hmm. both these characters are on the student council, and the guy, Miyuki Shirogen, okay, these two like each other, however, they do not want to be the ones, they do not be... Excuse me. They do not want to be the one that confesses to the other. So they both don't want to confess. Yes. Mm-hmm. What they try to do is they try and manipulate the other person to try and confess their love to them. Gotcha. So it's just an endless war of, I like this guy, but I don't want to tell him. Because the entire premise of the series is whoever asks the person out usually ends up um, usually ends up doing more for the relationship. Like, uh, ends up being, quote-unquote, the slave of the relationship. Gets used up, pretty much. So they do not want to be the one to confess because they don't want that to happen, but they also don't want to seem like they're soft because their image as student council president and co-president or vice president is that they're at the top of their game, you know, like nothing phases them. And they don't want relationships to, of course, phase them. So, uh, this series is also well known for its supporting characters, such as Ishigami, best guy, and Chika, be- I don't want to say best girl, Kaguya's best girl. Hey, that's Markiplier's dog. Didn't know she was an anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Chika is also, like, the series is most known for the Chika dance at the end of episode three. One, I think it's episode three or episode two that it's her doing like little singing and dancing and stuff like that. It's that's what the series is probably most known for, and it's actually really good. The series is really good. I do recommend watching that. Um, next series that I <clears throat> would recommend watching. This one was made by Koito Animations. All right. Okay. This one is, I think their second most popular. I think the popular most popular Koito Animation thing, series wise that you could watch. It is called Love, Shinobu, and Other Delusions. I think I said Never that heard one. of this one. I think I said the second one wrong. It's hard to pronounce it. It's a Shinu Shini Bio. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I can't really pronounce it. But this is a slice of life comedy as well as a romance. And usually those are all lumped up. Ah, together that is true. That's true. Most uh, slice of life rom com. Rom com. Gotta love them. Okay. I saw that. I <laughs> so the story is is Yuta Togashi. Uh, in middle school, he suffered from uh, Chinobu, which Chinobu, for those who do, don't know, is kind of like when you kind of like feel like you're in a fantasy world. Like you have these costumes, you have a, like a, a magical weapon, and you think you're in like this like uh, action fantasy world kind of thing, um, where it's 
in his case, he used to have been called the Dark Flame Master. Um, kind of a cringe, cringy all situation. Right. Um, when he graduated, he tried to put all that to the side. Try to put it just in the past. Pretend he never had that happen. However, uh, this girl named Dika, or Rika. Wait, was this the, is this the one with the eye patch? Yes, the girl with I the eye patch. I thought it was this one. Yep, that's the girl with the eye patch because she's also suffering from Chinovu as well. Like when she gets flicked in the face of a thing of paper. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, paper. That, that was uh, episode three. Uh, they were uh, like sending messages back and forth to each other. I think it was actually episode... I think it was three. They were like sending it back, uh, sending paper back and forth in the gym. And paper comes by. She tries to catch it with a, uh, two fingers. Yep. Hits her in the face. Right in the forehead. The, the, the cutest sound I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I just laughed at her expense. <laughs> um, but uh, Yuta and Rika uh, just basically like live uh, their lives as Shinobu and form a Shinobu. And they end up like finding other people who used to have been involved with this Shinobu as well. I think um, it was Yuta's like high school crush uh, is a Shinobu herself. But she, well, like, used to have been, but she's the same situation as, uh, as Yuta. She doesn't, she doesn't want... Anybody to know that she used to have been this uh, girl that uh, did all this, like, magical stuff, but, like, all, like, playing around and stuff like that. It's, oh, God, it's so freaking wholesome. It has, I remember I always used to play stuff like that when I was a kid. Yeah, that's, kind of this, is cool. the anime, this is the anime version of it. Mm -hmm. My favorite um, was uh, where, I, like, me and my brothers, we'd pick, like, a quote-unquote element. I always picked, like, water, like uh -huh. water and ice kind of the combination. Mm -hmm. Um, but this series has two seasons. Uh, I've only seen first season completely, and I've just started the second season. <laughs> God, it's absolutely wholesome in some ways, but near the end, it kind of gets like drama filled. And it's, oh, I thought you were going to say edge. No, no, no. It gets drama filled, and sometimes pulls your heartstrings a little bit. So we go from something very wholesome to something very. I don't want to show this to any. Uh, <laughs> family member ever especially <clears throat> sisters um this one is known because of its domestic girlfriend style kind of story except this one's a little different i'm trying to explain the premise of it but without trying to say that it's like without trying to say its name right now so it's right, no i'll wait till you say the name all right it is called the orimo orimo there's a long japanese name for it and i'll attempt it I guess I'll freaking accept it right now. Excuse me for... Re... Excuse me. All right. So it's called... Ore no imoto ga konai kawaii wa ke ga nai. Well, I heard kawaii, which is cute, right? Yes. The actual translation for this entire series is... My little sister can't be this cute. Ah, oh, yeah. Incest. Mm, love it. Mm, yeah, obviously. <laughs> this was released several years ago. Um, the first season... The, I mean, it, there's two seasons... And everybody, like, who's ever heard of this series knows that the series ends in a very, very weird way. This is just incest? It's somewhat like incest. They just straight up... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. But <laughs> the story, the story is Kusuke Kosaka is a normal 17-year-old high school student living... That's usually how every slice of life starts. I mean, I really don't have to read that sentence for you to know that. <laughs> uh, but he's living in Achiba. Has not gotten along with his younger sister, Kadino, in years. Mm -hmm. For longer than he can remember, Kadino has ignored his comings and goings. Like, they just straight up... Uh, Kadino ignores him. As uh, if, as if uh, he never existed. I thought, I thought you were going to say ignored his advances. No, 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 no. Uh, looked at him basically with like spurring eyes. He didn't. She didn't like him whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems as if the relationship between Kosuke and his sister, now fourteen, would continue this way forever. <sighs> However, one day, Kosuke finds a DVD case of a magical girl anime which had fallen in his house's entranceway. Kadino. What type of magical anime we're we talking? We're talking about cultured anime. No, 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 no. It's not cultured. But, um, it, well, okay, I won't say that, but Kadino, listen to this, Kadino is very into arrow gaze. 
I don't know if the, she's fourteen. Do you know well, what those? You know what those are, right? Yes. For anybody who doesn't know, basically they're basically hentai games. They're just basically games all around that are X rated, M rated. You get the point. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot. There's lots of those online. Judging from the title, this is just getting worse and worse. So. It gets worse and worse, but like putting all of the incest and all the weird stuff aside, story development. <laughs> Story development, character just development. Put all, just push all the incest away. <laughs> push all the important stuff away. Yeah. It, a big plot point. Yeah, char- push the incest. Character away. development, uh, like the characters themselves or the personalities, are actually like not bad. They're it's realistic in some ways, and other times it's not. I yeah. <laughs> okay, Se- season. I've seen everything. I've seen season one. I've seen the season two. And the endings to season two. I don't, I cannot Art. stress this enough how, yikes, this, it, while it's not something anybody should, like, um, avoid. You're getting judged hardcore right now. I was going to say, at this point, uh, anybody who watches this would probably get judged, but it's such, it's weirdly a good series. I'll refrain from that. I, I'm, I'm good, Chief. <laughs> mm. Me and uh, my friend Brody watched the first season, and I'm waiting for him to watch the second season. I don't yes. know. Brody will be on a podcast here fairly soon. We're just I don't know when, but it'll be soon. And Probably a Weeb Reviews about Maiden Abyss, right? Yes, or Yasuga Nasora, which Rexon hasn't seen, I've seen. Anybody else who's seen it probably has just... Just cringed right there at the thought of doing a weep review. What's this one about again? Um, I guess. All right. So, I'll go over it briefly. Yosuga no Sora is this anime where, um, I don't know the names at the moment because I, because you just flat out just do it to me with little to no time to prepare. Anyway, Uh um, it's about this, uh, brother and sister who, uh, moved to their to the countryside because their parents passed away in an accident, mm-hmm. car accident. So they went and moved to their grandfather's house, even though uh, it, they're all by themselves, basically. Uh, this story takes, like, several different, like, story arcs because it's a visual novel, and in the visual novel you can go on... You can date, basically, any of the girls that are mentioned in there. Mm. Uh, it's this guy named Haru and his sister, Sora. Uh, those two live together... And Haru and Sora, well, Sora is technically adopted. Um, Correction, they are blood related. Oh, well, here comes the whole, a righteous footing for incest. Uh, the there's, step. Sev- <laughs> there's several arcs. Um, so he goes out with Akira. Uh, he goes out with, like, um, several of the other girls that he talks to. Like, this is just, like, an arc form. So it's just, like, there. it's not, like, at the same time or in yeah. one timeline. It's, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just choose your girl. Yeah. And the final arc, the most popular arc, gets with his sister. And there's... Sorry. I thought I just puked. <laughs> there's... I mean, in the visual novel, there's two endings that I will not spoil. One is very light-warming. One... Light, light warming. warming. Light warming. Excuse me? Huh? You're English? rubbing a light bulb? English. He's speaking. Anyway. One that's t- going to that's, that's gonna peak on the mic hard. That is. One is very heartwarming. One is yeah. very dark for each of the endings. So it's kind of like... By dark, you mean... They both die. Oh. That's what I mean by dark. They both die. I thought you meant they... That's... Oh, that's that's the heartwarming. That's the heartwarming. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize in the dark they got into BDSM. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus had no part in that act. Oh, I <laughs> wish Jesus should have stopped the act. <laughs> God. Maybe he was watching. Maybe he was excited. What? <laughs> what? Okay. All right. Let's we're gonna step. We're gonna step on to the next. We're gonna here. step away from romance. Step away from everything. Just take a. Dr- drop out. Go, go out. Okay. Yeah, we're going to drop out of the romance and we're going to talk about Gabriel. Drop out. I applaud you for that transition, kind of. Because that kind of gave me quite an idea. So, this one was created by Doga Kopo, who I mentioned uh, last episode. Uh, they made a couple animes that I mentioned. Um, but this is mostly comedy and supernatural, uh, as well as the slice of life. This comedy follows uh, this angel named uh, Gabriel White. Gabriel Waito. Uh, uh, 
That's not racist. Why can't he be black? Shut up. <laughs> uh, she graduated at the top of her class at an angel school, like uh, in heaven. And uh, when you graduate, you get sent to the real world. Wait, Gabriel's a girl name? Yeah, they're all girls. Uh, well, there's four girls. I'll tell. Okay. Um, there's uh, Vinigi, who is also an angel. I can't. I think that's how you say it. There's Satania and. Wait, no, 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 no. Satania. No, 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 no. Sa sorry, sorry. Saitama? Sorry. One punch me. Hold on. Sorry. Vingade is a devil. Sorry. In the anime, she's a nice devil. So that's why I mixed her up with an angel. She's a devil, but she's treat she treats everybody like an angel. There's Raphael, who is an angel. I know that's an angel name. So is Gabriel. But yeah, Gabriel, weird Raphael, females with yeah. under the name Gabriel. And then there's uh, Satania, who's uh, a devil. Uh, Satania is she tries to be she's the most devilish girl uh, in the show. It's just unfortunately she's bullied a lot. Oh, uh, what be the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awful. Uh, see, okay, I'll show you, I'll show each pictures of these. So, uh, it's Gabriel, right there, there's Raphael, Satania, and then there's, uh, I think, who's the one that gets bullied? The Satania. Best girl. Yep. Absolutely. Never seen it, but, yeah. Um, what was, uh, yeah, Gabriel, uh, comes to the real world, and instead of being the angel that she was supposed to be, because she, remember, she's top of the class. She graduated top of the class, so she would be like the most, an like the biggest angel in the world. Like she would save everybody from everything, and you know, lead the world to like. I'd be a sadistic angel. It's like a grovel. Well, she she becomes like this. Uh, what's it called? Like a, a failure of an angel. I don't know what. Fallen angel. Fallen angel. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what they said. But fallen mm -hmm. angel. She becomes a fallen angel. She like her like personality goes from an angel like to a devil like. She doesn't really care about anything as much. It, in most lore, the the wings turn black, and that's the signifying sign of a fallen angel. Yes, that's exa I think that's what they actually did for um, the show. Actually, now that I think about mm -hmm. it, like her uh, her like um, little halo at the top goes black, whenever the, she mentions that she's an angel, it's black. So, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, this does not have a season two, which is sad because there's a lot of source material, and um, unfortunately. Um, it's such a good series that it sadly just does not have a season two. So I'm well, going to... If they had a season two, they probably had a succubus in there. Cause that's, um, just, that's pretty... <laughs> I cannot believe you said that. Okay. Wait, no, no. This is legitimate, like, lore, all right? This is, like, mythology kind of lore. We're talking about this. Devils and succubus kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Or a male succubus is an incubus. Okay. What? Whatever. All right. So I'm going to give my voice... Look it up if you don't know what it is. I'm going to give my voice a little breath. Braxton's got one... Uh, mon I think it's just a manga series to talk about real quick. Yes. This is a webtoon, meaning it's, it's it's only on the app webtoon or site webtoon. Yeah. Very respectable anime source. They have a lot of uh, exclusives. Most of them are. For Before you say anything, mm -hmm. if anybody's going to get into like uh, the anime stuff, there's kind of like four tiers of for like animes and stuff like that. Something like that. It goes as a webtoon first off, or um, a lot of a lot of times it's a web novel where it's entirely just text. Yeah, web then novel. it goes to uh, manga and then eventually anime adaptations. Yeah. That's how most of them are. It could it could either go as a webtoon or a web novel, a light novel or a manga. Those two could be combined, and then the anime adaptation, yes. which usually happens roughly like three or four years after the original sources start publishing. So out. if you Sometimes really want to enjoy. It's like progression of how it came to be the most. Start with the anime and work your way back. Uh -huh. If you start with like the web novel or the light novel, you'll notice it'll get progressively worse as it goes on. Because usually it's the best and it's like source. You, you know what I mean? Usually like the anime adaptations fall flat on how amazing the manga source is usually. Yes. There are instances. And sometimes the manga falls flat on the light exactly. novels or web novels. Exactly. It's like there's some instances where the anime adaptation is not as good as the mangas but however there's most times it's uh, vice versa the mangas uh, <clears throat> are better than the anime and uh the anime sometimes just doesn't <coughs> really have its mark i guess yes. so yours is yes bastard now i did not just insult you that is the name of this webtoon and i will and usually we bleep out uh we usually like not really we'll bleep probably out. bleep it out or drop out the audio. Yeah, but this, but since this keeping, series... Keep this in because this is legitimately the title of this one. Yeah. Bastard. Yeah. So go ahead and discuss your All thing. All right. 
So, basically, the overall premise of it is a boy tries to protect his girlfriend from his serial killer father, who has also taken a liking to her. Mm. So, uh, from a young age, uh, uh, what's his name? Sorry. Jin Sion, I think. Would that uh, be how you say it? Jin Sion, yes. Yeah, Sion. Jin Sion, uh, which is the main character. It's the serial killer's son. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever he got into a crisis, uh, something in his mind would take over, and he would have a soci- sociopathic nature who would do any do whatever without any remorse to get him out of that situation. Uh-huh. He kind of inherited that from his father because his father, he kidnaps women, mm. kills them, and sells their organs on the black market. Mm-hmm. And most of it is just for his own amusement. Mm. And what he does is he uses his son to lure in these women, oh, like boy. as a tutor for his schooling, and forces his son to knock them out oh, with a, with a uh, padded sledgehammer, I believe. They hit it behind a bathroom mirror. It's like a sledgehammer wrapped in a bunch of different padding and blanket. Damn. Knock them out, and yeah, his father uh, guts them while they're still alive. Sadistic. It's f***ed up. God. Sorry. But, uh, so, Jin's trying what, whatever he can to get away from his father, but is also terrified because his father will kill him. <laughs> without Jeez. a doubt. Like, no hesitation. The second he's no longer useful, he's dead. Jeez. So he's trying to do everything he can to get away from his father without dying. And then he meets this girl that he likes that his father also seen him with and took a liking to her because of it. Mm. So that's he has brutal. to try and protect her from his father. Oh, that's brutal. That it's... sounds extremely brutal. Like, yeah. okay, I've never really read any webtoons. Um, I've done, like, maybe one small mm-hmm. series that I've read. I've just started reading it. Um, and it's Tower of God, right? Tower of God, yes. yes. Um, that series I started reading, um, haven't really gotten into it just quite yet. I'm only like a couple chapters slash episodes in, mm-hmm. but reading it as we go on and that sort of stuff. I'm pulling up the stats for Bastard right now. Um, it was last updated in 2017. Let me see. I wonder what the first episode is. Can't really seem to find it, but... It has one million people, like, subscribe to it. Like, that's, pretty, that's pretty good for a Because in Webtoon, if there's something you like, you can subscribe to it. It'll notify you of updates or just to show that you really like it. Mm-hmm. It has a 9.88 rating out of 10. Wow. Out of a million, a million people have yes. subscribed to this. It gave it ratings. And, and rating of a 9.88 that's incredible. from a million people. That's incredible. Yes. Wow. All right. It's insane. It has 94 episodes. Uh... Okay, so tw- June eighth of twenty fifteen was the first oh, episode. Oh wow! All right, and it's by far the best manga I have ever read. Oh wow! Without a doubt. So, this anime here is, I think, by the time this uh, is out, I think it's just about ready to end. I think the series, the season's just about ready to end, because it's currently airing. Well, you, well, yeah, it was. It's fall. Our old season now is fall 2019. We're just about ready to enter winter 2020. Um, this one is, in my opinion, the most underrated anime to come out of the fall 2019 season. It is titled Ore Suki. Are you the only one who likes me? I did not ask that question to the, the people at home. That's what the no, title's he, called. He wants to smash. <laughs> um, so here is the story. But first, a little question. What would you do if a girl you're interested in would confess to you? On (laughs) on top of that, what if there was another girl as well? A cool upperclassman adored by the whole school and your cheerful, energetic childhood friend. I bet you would be over the moon. Thing is... I'd pick childhood friend. I know them quite a lot more. Thing is, what if there was an unexpected problem about the contents of the confession? Oh, the no. whole premise of this of this series, uh, as it is a little, it was a little confusing to uh, ask that question and make it sound like you know it would make sense. Is this uh, guy named Joru? Uh, well, he's nicknamed Joru. They're like each of the characters have like weird nicknames. Like right. it's like first letter of the first name and like seven letters of like the random alphabet makes up this nickname. But I'll call him Joru because he's mostly known for that. Um, he's uh. He's been getting, he's got a couple friends, and uh, 
they all want to like talk to him invite him over to this little bench anybody who's seen this series the most the common enemy in this show is the bench god the bench and the baseball game two of the worst enemies in anime history why and is that because every single confession all ties into a baseball game that happened uh i think last the la the year before all the heck i'd go for the bench Okay, but the story is is the childhood friend Aoi Hintana. Okay, first uh, I think it's like the second one to confess to uh, Joru. However, it's not to Joru. Uh, the upper classmate that we were talking about is named uh, Taiyu. Excuse me, Taiyu Oga or Sunshan, as they call him, because he's bright, sunshiny, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, Aoi Hinta. And Sakura Akino, those two confess to Joru to try and get them to confess. Oh, God, this is confusing a little bit. Sorry. It's easier to explain when you watch the series. But those two girls tell Joru that they like Sunshan and Joru and ask for Joru's help to get uh, Sunshan to date one of them. Oh, so nobody confessed to him. Not yet. There's a girl named Somiriko. San Shu Queen. God, Nick, these names Nick, are ridiculous. That's why they're nicknamed like something uh. very uh like small. Um I can't remember hold on, I think uh it says the no it does not. For whatever reason. Um the Ioe, uh right. it, I don't know what her nickname is. I forgot. I'll have to look that up. It's just that I don't remember the nickname. Uh Sakura, the one with the the blue the blue hair is uh, nicknamed Cosmo. That's more of a uh, that's more of a uh, like pinkish purple. Yeah. Well, she's nicknamed uh, Cosmo, Cosmos, or something like that. And uh, that name right there, that long name. Oh God. She's Sumireko Senshokin. Yeah. She's nicknamed Pansy, best girl. Um, Pansy. Pansy. Pants. Like uh, like the um, the flowers, the ah. Pansy flowers. The only Pansy I know is calling somebody a wimp. Yeah. But um, in the in the freaking library, a random bench appears. And Pansy confesses to Joru. Like I said, the bench is a common enemy here. The bench, uh, the bench literally appears on the school roof out of nowhere. In one episode, we need to kill the bench. We need to kill the benches. Bench is stronger than Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gone now. Thanos, snap it away. Splinters. That's <laughs> all he can do. Yeah, but each like while this series is a little difficult to explain at first, and I'm sorry if I explained it wrong in some way. The, it's like a rom-com gone wrong for several different reasons. And each of the characters, you know, there's a lot of betraying in this series. Somehow they're all, they all get back together as like friends and stuff like that. But man, there's a lot of like deep God, I'm, stuff. I'm not that patient for betraying unless it's people I've known for decades. Yeah. But like Sun-Chan uh, actually likes Pansy, but Pansy's the only one that's confessed to Jodu. And Pansy only has feelings for Joru. And, you it's know. It's just a big, like, web of love that none of them connect somehow. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you gotta add in the bench. You gotta add you gotta, in, gotta add add in, in the baseball bench game. Chan. Gotta add in Bench Kun and oh, the freaking oh, baseball game. Uh, oh, it's a guy. All right. Apparently. I, I don't know. I said Chan. So. so, and the issue, and the thing is, it's like all these confessions tie together to that baseball game because Sun Chan lost the game. He was crying in the like the hallway. Sun Chan's a guy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was a girl. No, no, no. <laughs> um, he was crying in the hallway, and the two girls, uh, Cosmos and Aoi, they I don't just pin him to the ground and do unspeakable acts, tear him up. Jesus H, man, why? Why? <laughs> I'm trying to explain the series, and you make it sound like a hentai. Anyway, <clears throat> not that please. word, cultured anime. You know, whatever. Those two girls saw um, saw uh, Sunshine crying, and they've fallen in love since. Uh, Pansy, um, I can't remember. Ex oh, uh, Joru saw this girl uh, like walk by him and thought that she was mm -hmm. incredibly pretty, and it turned out to be Pansy. But like you know, Pansy has like two personalities. One with the glasses, she does. She looks like very sadistic, and all that. Takes the glasses off, and it's like she's the the beautiful girl that Jodu met the first time at, at the baseball game, of course. Um, and Jodu just will not date Pansy.
because it just does not like that sadistic side of her, I guess. It's a little... It's weird, but the series is, like I said, probably the more underrated shows of fall of 2019. And even though it's difficult to explain, I would recommend watching it because it's very, like, good in every way possible, I guess. Once again, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna give my voice a break. You got two to speak of. <clears throat> oh, well, hello. So now we're on to Future Diary. You've all probably heard of it. I've heard of both Future Diary uh, and Kill a Kill. So what do you think of Yandere? The first oh, no. girl that probably comes to mind is Yuno, oh, the no. pink-haired, sadistic girl with a oh, knife. No, no, don't you oh no me. Don't I'm, you try to go away. This is a legitimate part of the anime. I'm oh knowing until I stop with the oh knowings, which may not right. happen. So Yuki, the main character, his phone turned into a future diary for some reason. They don't necessarily explain it at first. Uh, capable of predicting the future up to 90 days. <laughs> Yuki discovers that he and 11 others are part of a survival game orchestrated by the god of space and time, Deuce. Hunger Games? No, not a... <laughs> kind of, yes. Only oh. one can survive. Oh, shit. And the one surviving becomes the next god. Oh, but it's not necessarily such a good prize. Come There's a reason. Up. It's not necessarily a good prize. There's a reason why Deuce doesn't want to do it anymore. Mm. It's loneliness. Uh-huh. Kami sama. The aim of the game is to eliminate the other diary holders. Uh, the wi the winner becoming a god to prevent the apocalypse. Sorry. Mm. Yuki finds himself protected by Yuno, a charming but psychotic classmate who obsessively stalks him after they promise to go star stargazing together a year before. Jesus. And, my God, is it one of the most disturbing yet intriguing animes I've ever seen. <laughs> Just by that alone, it sounds pretty in uh, interesting. Like, there was a scene where... Uh, you know, it's just they get attacked by another diary holder, and she just goes around with an axe, beheading like six people, <gasps> just to protect Yuki. Jesus! I think you've all seen the meme where she's like Yuki. No, I'm not. It's like holding her face at the. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, now yeah. that you explained it, yes. Oh yeah, but she is absolutely psychotic and a maniac, and tries to kill him towards the end. Yonda days. Let me tell you, they're way too crazy. They're mm -hmm. just way too crazy. Anybody who, um, I love you so much, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, if anybody does not know, like, the whole, like, dad X, uh styles of, like, women, um, I only know, basically, I only know, like, two. There's the Cinderace, which they act like, they act like they're... Act are, like they hate you, but in reality, yes, they love you. I was wanting to say something else, but I, it would require me to, like, bleep it out. I was going to say, like, they act like a, but, you know. Um, they act like they hate you, but they actually, like, love you very much. Yandere's... They're Cinderace, but they're very on openly. They, they, no, no, no. They very openly. I love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm gonna have to kill you. Yikes. <laughs> scary. That's scary. Um, very up in your face. If you ever betray me, if there's, you ever go near um, another person, you're dead. <laughs> there's over. I think there's over ten different like dead is. I guess I could be wrong. I'll look them up uh, and put them in the video post edit. And you know, if anybody's not watching this in the video, then. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just look them up yourself. I don't know. Okay. All right. The next one. Kill, kill a kill. kill. I think everybody's at least heard of it. Yeah. It's famous for uh, all the fan service. It, it is. I mean, what's not? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of fan service. There's a lot of panty shots and a lot of other things. Money shots. They work that into the fight somehow. It's weird, but oh, I'm, I won't complain. Who would? So. Who would? Hanoji. Is that how you say that? Hunoji, yeah. Hunoji Academy is a fictional high school situated in Tokyo Bay. Ah. Tokyo Bay, Japan. Uh, the school is dominated by the fearsome student council led by their president, Kiryuin? I'm terrible at these names. What Kiryuin? Kiryuin. Kiryuin. That. <laughs> <laughs> its students wear Goku uniforms now. Goku? <laughs> Are we talking about... Not Dragon that? Ball Z. Are we talking about that Goku? No. But the uniforms, which God, give God, their wearers superhuman abilities, because they are instructed with a s special material known as life fighters. Uh -huh. Okay. The transfer student Ryuko, best girl, because well, main character, best girl. Uh, Ryuko Matui, who who wields a scissor a scissor shaped longsword. A little bit of a tongue twister. It's basically uh, like a giant pair of scissors, but only half of it. Wait, what? What? Yes. Giant pair of scissors. Only half like, of it. 
Like, if you hold up a pair of scissors, it's just one of those pieces. Like, it's just one handle in one of those pieces. Because, uh, the, the person who killed her father had that weapon and specifically left by, left behind half of the weapon oh. so she could come find them. Oh. Because she now wanted a challenge sense. or something fun. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, so she wields that trying to find her dad's killer. So... Uh, sorry. Yeah, the scissor-shaped sh- uh, longsword has a unique ability to cut through those uniforms, mm. which n- not very many things at all have those. She finds a sentient sailor uniform. Sentient. <laughs> well, this is getting <laughs> That spicy. she names Senketsu? Sen- Senketsu? Senketsu, yes. Yes, Senketsu, which is completely made of life fibers. Oh, great. Because the Goku uniforms only have, like, one or two life fibers in them. This one's entirely made out of life fibers. Mm. And the only other person who has something like this is the student council president. Oh. Oh, boy. So, basically, uh, she tries to push herself to get stronger and defeat each one of the student council members. Yes. Because there's, like, six total, and uh, that one name starts with a K. Kuruin. Kuruin. Cur- that we're just I can't say, say it. We're just gonna say Kuduin. I'm just gonna say K. Okay. <laughs> K. So K is the leader. She's the strongest. And uh, Ray- Ryuko is trying to figure out her dad's killer, and she found out it's connected with K. Oh boy. So she's doing everything things she can to defeat the previous student council members. Oh boy. To work her way up there and defeat her. This. Ooh, this is crazy. She also befriended a hyperactive classmate, Mako, and lives with her family. Mako. Hyperactive. Sounds Mako like has one of the most boring looks in the world. Oh. Like brown bowl cut, brown eyes, and that's about it. It's incredibly Are boring. You, I don't know if you're describing me or not. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. More interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm going to slap you. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to slap you. God. All right, fine. I see how it is. <laughs> I'll just get Brody on here replace him now. God. All right. <laughs> All right, you transition time. Yes. Okay. So, I we got two more left. Okay. These two I would recommend over basically any of the other series that I've mentioned. Uh, Gabriel Dropout, Sanafu, Hang and I, Skill Teaser of uh, Takachi San, Made in Abyss, Kobayashi Dragons, Quidditch Shelter, Quintuplets. I see. Even over Domestic Girlfriend. No, those last two. I'm talking. Uh, oh, sorry. I would watch these I'm last sorry. two. I would watch these last two over any of the ones that I've said. Okay, first one, it is called, Japanese name time, butchering Japanese time, Shinshun Butar Yaruwa Money Girdle Senpai no Yumi wo Minai. I heard Money Girdle in the middle of it, that was it. It is, English title is called Rascal Does Not Dream of Money Girl Senpai. This one, okay, it is known for having the most misleading title in all of anime. Because even though it the title says Money Girl Senpai, it's only there for, like, one scene. One scene the entire season. It's just there. Because the whole premise of this is... I'm going to read this out. There's a rumor about a mysterious phenomenon called puberty syndrome. For example, Sakuta Asu... Asugawa... Asugawa, sorry. I can't handle these names. Sakuta Asugawa is a high school student who suddenly sees a bunny girl appear in front of him. This girl is actually an upperclassman girl named Mai Sakurajima. However, the reason why she's wearing this bunny girl outfit is because only a few people see her. And Sakura is one of those males that can't see her because of this puberty syndrome. This, uh, this Mai Sakurajima guy is a uh, female actress okay, who has gone on hiatus from the entertainment industry. For some reason, the people around Mai cannot see her buddy girl figure. Sakura sets out to solve this mystery, mis- excuse me, mystery. And as he spends time with Mai, he learns her secret feelings. Other heroines also have puberty syndrome. So it's not just Mai Sakurajima, it's also all the other characters that we meet. In this So, are you talking about like the personalities from certain like animes kind of like come to life kind of? No, no, no. What ends up, well, okay. This is what ends up happening. Each of the characters that we meet mm-hmm. is a different arc, which means it's a different, like, puberty syndrome, quote-unquote puberty syndrome So it's like a choose-your-own-girl type thing again, kind of. It's not really. 
okay, let me let me explain this a little more. Um, in this series, uh, we all like everybody who's watched this up to the third episode knows that Sakura gets with my Sakurajima, of course. Best girl, by the way, because she's freaking adorable. Um, but after that, uh, I can't remember the arcs in chronological order. I'm sorry. If I remember the names, I'll remember uh, each of the arcs. So let me go ahead and talk about this. Um, so one of the girls is named... Uh, uh, hold on. Give me a sec. Uh, one of the girls' name is named uh, Diyo Futaba. Uh, she is the science, scientific girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, her puberty syndrome issue is she's cloned herself or not really cloned herself she, there's two of her one there's two of her and one is being more x-rated than the other and the only way to get rid of that is if those two ended up like meeting together or something like that it's it's weird and then this is so unbelievably confusing it okay it sounds like that because i'm trying difficult to, i'm trying very hard to explain it and i'm not very good at explaining stuff I'll say, I'll I'll do the sister, uh, real quick. Don't uh, do the sister. Let me work, <laughs> let me phrase this right. Let me explain Sakura's sister's puberty syndrome because it's the last arc. It's one of the weirdest arcs to ever happen. But what ends up happening is, let me find her real quick. Uh, Katie. Uh, Katie. Wow. This, this American girl. name. What? Well, it's it's uh, typed out K A D A E. Nope, excuse me. K-A-E-D-E. -E. Sorry. Okay. No but it's K-A-D. But it's I, I just call her Katie. Um, as an elementary school uh, school girl, she was bullied quite a bit. Um, she ends up losing her memory, I think, because of it. Um, and when she loses her memory, she just straight up decides, like, not to go to school. She's afraid of the world. She just does not want to even leave the house. And, I mean, pretty much... Be, develops a brother complex not in that like the x-rated way just you know she loves her brother more than possibly like anybody else in the world uh unless you watch it anymore sorry um <clears throat> and she ends up like getting her memories back near the end of this series which means all of the time that was spent where um uh she had didn't have her memory which was like a span of like several years just gone she doesn't remember. She it's like back to where it was before. She doesn't remember anything, unless it was back from elementary school days. Um, this series is the like single-handedly possibly the saddest anime to watch because each of the arcs, it just seems like um, Sakura is just hopeless. He doesn't he doesn't know what to do in these situations, especially with like the Bunny Girl one, uh, the first one with Mai. Uh, it's just uh, in the first arc, uh, nobody can see Mai at all. You know, and as people fall asleep, she disappears from their memories. Okay, at the end of episode three, uh, Sakura tries to stay up as many nights as he can, so he, so he could still see uh, Mai. It turns out uh, Sa uh, Mai drugged him to sleep. So at the end of the episode, he doesn't remember her until uh, in the notebook where uh, Mai did like a little bit of writing. He remembers, starts remembering her more and more. And then as soon as he, like, goes out to the schoolyard or whatever and just, like, confesses to, like, everybody in the school, after that, everybody can see her again. Um, it, God, it's, and then there's another arc. I'll explain this arc real quick with, um, it's, uh, Mai's, I think it's a sister. I think she has a sister. I can't tell because the names are not similar and whatsoever, but... Anyway, it's this girl named uh, Noroka. Noroka. She uh, is an idol. And those two, Mai and Noroka, switch bodies. So they switch bodies. So Noroka is now Mai and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And um, they just basically try to live their lives as, you know, the other person. And it's not very easy. So they, they don't try to switch back at all? Anymore? They do. They do. It's just, it happens randomly. <clears throat> oh, and I remember another one. I'll make this one quick. God, wait, wait, wait a minute. What if you're in the bed and you just switch places with your sister? Yikes. Yeah, that's okay. a big yikes. So, one of the characters we're introduced to is uh, Tomoe Koga. Uh, in this arc, Sakura keeps repeating one day. 
Every time he falls asleep. Groundhog day. Yeah. Every time he falls asleep, it's the same day. Goes back to sleep, same day. I like those kind of... Yeah. Uh, and the only way he could fix that is if he finds that one in seven billion per a chance that he would find the same person having that same issue. Just turns out to be Koiga. Because anime logic, they're in the same school. Yep. Somehow. Yeah. yeah. But Very those, logical. The And I'm not going to say anything more than that. Because that arc is actually pretty freaking intense. I love times. the Groundhog Day style mm -hmm. uh, things. Like ReZero has it and it was no. beautiful. Now, while this does have one season and it's incredibly sad. Movie. Oh my god. The movie came out just let, this summer. Oh my god. It's so freaking sad. It makes anybody want to cry like a freaking toddler because oh my god it doesn't it focuses on a new arc but it's it's uh they kind of mention it a little bit that sakura used to have this crush on a girl because sakura has like this scar on his chest um and he was down in the dumps because of it and he meets this girl uh named uh, shoko um shoko i i think i said it right the first time uh, after he meets her uh, Soko is basically never seen again. Okay. Uh, in, in the anime, kind of. They're mentioning her a lot, but she doesn't really make appearance, appearances until, like, the last episode. And in the movie. She's a big part of the movie. And I will not spoil anything of not only that arc in the season, but in the movie as well. Because it's sad. It's very sad. Um, but transition time here. From Here comes the big daddy, his favorite. All right. This one, very first anime series I've watched start to finish and read the manga all the way up to its current chapter, which by now is at like 255. The series is going to be ending here soon with the manga. I mean, there's almost 30 volumes of it. Mm -hmm. Domestic Nakana, Jill. Domestic freaking girlfriend. Everybody who is been a part of the anime scene, excuse me, anybody who's been a part of it for at least some sort of time, I've heard of this. Okay, spring 2019 was my first time watching this series, and I got, now unfortunately, this, this is all in Japanese. I don't know if I should have done that, knowing all the X-rated stuff in there. JK. Um, uh, no, no, there is no JK. It's very, very X-rated. Okay, well. It's borderline cultured <coughs> possibly okay so anybody who has not seen anything about this living under a rock let me sorry or maybe they're trying to watch more wholesome ones <laughs> i'm gonna have to spoil that real quick by telling you guys a story about this <sighs> briefly i did an entire weeb reviews uh video on this on my channel known as the fast lane racing station Several Which months we, ago. We will probably be uh, we uploading will, it on this channel, too. We will probably... probably. I'll probably upload it because... So like it Taylor Presents or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Even though um, what I do say in that is a little outdated because of the fact that the manga is... I mean, when I recorded that, it was at, like, chapter 225. We've gone up, like, 30 chapters from then. So, we the could story... probably do a re-recording of it, then. I don't know. That, that, that took forever to record. I don't know if I could do that, to be honest. All right. Let me briefly tell this story out, okay? Natsuo is, as always, normal high school teenager living his life. That's how it always happens. In Slice always. of Lives, there's barely any that are, like, younger and barely any that are, excuse me, older than It's like, God, why can't it be one? It's like, ah, yes, uh, this teenager, not normal at all. He has three arms, uh, four fingers on that third arm somehow. We all know Fully that usable. I mean, for anybody who's all like, why is all the slice of lives dedicated to like high school times? It's mainly because of the fact that two reasons. A lot of teens watch anime. It's That's a lot why. of teenagers. It's to help relate to them. And that, and the reason why most of them are set in high school time is mm -hmm. I've learned about this is high school in Japan is very difficult from high school in America, both like, um, like physically wise because you know they do like club activities and they do, um, uh, they do more like festivals and stuff like that and everybody has to be involved emotionally all the kids actually enjoy going to high school like more way more than here like every, I, would, I, I wish i was uh i don't want to sound like too much of a weave here but it'd be cool i really like how the school system is it's much more difficult in japan but i think i like it'd be really cool the only thing about that is like you were in school a whole lot more but mm -hmm. 
like I said. But if it's enjoyable, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, like most people who live in Japan who go to high school, most times they'll say it's their best times of the of their lives because it's high school and you know they can do stuff and do like club activities. But anyway, going back to the domestic not kind of show um, story, uh, Natsuo is in love, kind of. At first, it's just kind of, but then it gets. Uh, no, at more. the very beginning, he was. Definitely. I don't know. He really loved his teacher. I, I would. Remember, yeah. I. Ah, to me, it wasn't like. He, I'm pretty sure in the first like cha- few chapters, he said, "He said, you know, I love you," or something along the lines of that, right? I think it was after, um, after when Hina was crying, uh, when they were doing that little scene where Hina was crying because of her little situation with her boyfriend. But anyway, let me continue on because yeah, I am spoiling sorry. before I'm saying sorry. anything. This, te- this girl named Hina, who is a teacher, but she's only like 21, like she's a very young teacher, um, Natsuo ends up falling in love with. And in order to combat that, try to get rid of Hina in um, in his mind. Because he, she's kind of like subtle, subtly hinted that he's too young. Like it's yeah, not gonna obviously, work. obviously. I mean, it's a freaking teacher and student. But yeah, he goes to a mixer. Uh, where he meets this girl named Rui. I'm just gonna say Rui. I know I know the original Japanese name is just Dewey, but I'm just gonna say Rui just for English purposes. Um, meets Rui, and um, those two sneak out of the mixer and go back to the apartment where they do the uh, the dirty. They do the dirty. Okay. And what ends up happening? They go to pound town. What ends up happening is uh, Natsuo's dad is remarrying. Uh, and the person that he's remarrying is the mother of Rui and Hina. So, yeah. So, both the girl he and the teacher he likes are, in fact, sisters, and he's now living with them. Yes. Um, now, I never mentioned, we never mentioned this at all during any of these uh, beginner guides to anime. Openings are the key thing to an anime. Okay. To some extent. If, I mean, I don't think the opening song or anything has to be so amazing. It's just, the thing with anime openings for me is I usually enjoy listening to a bunch of, like, rock and metal songs. Okay, my favorite band is Rhapsody of Fire. My artist of the decade, according to Spootify, was Disturbed. Okay. <laughs> Mine was Hollywood of the Dead. Oh, well. 189 hours, and that's just starting from mid-June. Okay, that is, well, yeah. Um... Let's get that forward, sorry. Um, what was it? Oh, the opening by Mini Me is in freaking incredible. I absolutely love that opening so much. If anybody is sure you're not just a little bit biased because it's your favorite manga, or no? Well, you know the, I mean? well, the thing is, is like I've also I also like the Isekai Quartet theme song. I also mm-hmm. like the opening, all the openings to Re Zero and the closings. They're all freaking good. Um, the opening to Watamoe is very unbelievably metal. Which is amazing. Um, the Death Note's incredibly metal. Yes, in opening. yes, that too. Death Metal's opening is incredible. So you get the point. Opening songs, if you like them, kind of help with like, in some way, help you uh, like the anime a little bit more. In my case, you know, sometimes I enjoy listening to the songs. Um, in like, let's say Hiniko Note, uh, that one's a very good one, even though it's like, you know, very like not very well known. Um, that sort of stuff. So, pretty much, uh, as much as I do love the the series itself, I personally do not think the anime adaptation is on par with. Oh yeah, the they manga. can't show a lot of the X-rated things that happen. Well, there. the manga is very mature. Yeah, like, it's and very revealing scenes. So I would not read it if you're well on a bus. under seventeen because that's what they ask you before you try to read it. Under seventeen and on a bus yeah. in public. I may have. You may have done read that. it on the bus. Yeah, it was kind of an. I, I just thank God nobody looked because there were some very revealing scenes. But yes, um, but after you get like through the anime like areas of the manga, which like I I did this in the um, I said this during the uh, Wee reviews. It covers like over like six volumes, which is absurd because it cuts away like a lot of character development because the anime makes it look like. You know, not a lot of character development really happens. In the manga, it's like each of the characters then grow up to, like, do stuff, you know, and they don't really worry about relationships. They're just trying to get through their freaking lives. They're, it, 
the anime makes it look like it's all about rom romance and stuff like that when the anime they're all just put in this very terrible situation and they're just trying to find a way to get through it so obviously while it, going to pound town of course. not no actually like pretty much after you get through like the first six volumes or like first seven volumes there's rarely any more of those scenes Maybe, what's the best part well i'm sorry but if you do end up wanting to get into Domestic Girlfriend in some way, shape, or form, I would definitely recommend reading the manga instead of watching the anime. As, unless you want to listen to the amazing song by Mini-Me. Uh, you know, listen to the song, read the manga. Yeah, listen to the song, read the manga. I, honestly, though, watching the anime back with Brody because we watched it again. Uh, I watched it again with Brody. Uh, man, sometimes, you know, um, I love the series, but... I just don't think the anime adaptation is on held par up, with manga. Held up to... Yeah. So, God, we're done with the Beginner's Guide to Anime now. Yes, we actually are. So now we, we can... Gr Brody will be on here fairly soon. Yes. Keep referencing him. He and will then, be on here really soon. And then we also have a uh, weeb review, somewhat of a weeb review on uh, My Hero Academia coming out soon. We yes. Just, we uh, barely it's probably going to be multiple parts, just from... The first, I want to say, like, half an hour episode, like, half an hour we recorded, it was just going through the first, like, three episodes yeah. of and, the first season. And, you know, we barely mentioned, like, basically anything about the My Hero Academia story uh, in that half an hour, which says a lot, because we I mean, I, no, 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 we, we were in-depth explaining the first couple episodes. Okay, yeah, but that's just a couple episodes. We I know, that's because there's so much stuff we that have four happens seasons. in every episode. The amount of stuff that happens in a season of Slice of Life happens in one to two episodes in an action. <laughs> that is true. So, pretty much all these animes that we talked about here in these four parts of the Beginner's Guide to Anime are definitely some that people should add to their watch list. Definitely. If, they don't, if you don't like them, that's fine. It's just some that we just recommend watching in some way or form, or even just reading. Just pick out ones that caught your interest and give them a try and let us know what you thought. Yeah. Um, now, like I said before, that this podcast... Also includes stuff just talk about Jap Japan in general or games in general. We'll, we'll probably be incorporating some more like Japan-like things here soon as well as like games as well because we're not just only going to talk about anime. We're also going to talk about Japan in general. And I think once we get Brody on, we can probably do an episode of him of their plan to travel to Japan this summer. And we're actually, uh, after the trip to Japan, we'll probably do an entire episode in depth of what we did and stuff like that. Yes. So, so thank you all so much for tuning in to the Otaku cast, especially during these four parts of the A Beginner's Guide to Anime. Tune in on the next episode where we will be, excuse me, we'll... <laughs> we will do a bit of weeb reviews with Dakota on My Hero Academia. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Check us out on Spotify if you're listening on YouTube, and check us out on YouTube if you're listening on Spotify. The names are basically the same. All right. Sayonara, everybody. Hello, it is me, Taylor, and I want to thank you once again for supporting us, you know, just by listening to Taku Cast and stuff like that. Uh, just want to give off a quick uh, few updates. Uh, first off, uh, we are going to be taking a few weeks off due to the holidays, of course. Everybody's going to be out with fa friends and family. We're going to be doing the same thing, so we're, you're not going to see any new Otaku Cast in the next few weeks, uh, as well as as the My Hero Academia Weeb Reviews Part 1, that will not come out until, like, maybe, you know, middle of January. So you have a little bit of time to catch up on the animes and stuff like that that we've been talking about, stuff like that. Second, uh, after the My Hero Academia upload and stuff like that, uh, all the regular scheduled podcast episodes will go out every other week. Uh, just basically either every other Wednesday or every other Thursday or even Friday, depending on some cases. This just helps us out uh, because we are not very consistent at our recording. This just helps us out with that issue, I guess. So once again, thank you all so much for tuning in to the Otaku Cast. And once again, see you guys sometime in the near future. Have a good holiday, everybody.